Welcome back everyone. So today, loads of time-saving hidden features within the Tesla, plus a couple of my favorite tips. I can guarantee you will learn something new from this video, whether you're a first-time Tesla buyer or an experienced Tesla owner. Right, let's crack straight on with it. Okay, so a nice easy starter for 10. You jump in your car and you want to go home. So instead of clicking on the navigation and having to type everything in, you just click and hold, pull down, and there your home appears and let it go, and the car will do the rest. Easy as that. Okay, so while we're talking about navigation, as good as this system is, it is just Google Maps. You can just type in where you want to go. We're fancying going down to Ludlow Castle for a little bit of culture. However, people are addicted to their phones. So here we have Google Maps. I have Ludlow Castle. If I find it on Google Maps, and then scroll across so you find Share. If I click Share, the Tesla option comes up. If for some reason it doesn't come up under here, maybe you've not used it before, scroll across till you see more. Here's Tesla. It might be a bit further down if you haven't used it before. Click the Tesla app, sending, sent, and if by magic the car has received it, sent by phone to go to Ludlow Castle. Lovely jubbly. How easy is that? Next up is a couple of shortcuts on the screen. You may see the temperature, but if you actually click on the temperature, it brings you up to the weather for where you are. And actually, if you have somewhere in the sat nav and you click on that, it'll actually bring up the weather for the destination of where you're going. And you can see the chance of rain, humidity, wind, UV index, and the air quality index. So we can all see in the pollution that we live in nowadays. Secondary is the clock. If you actually click the clock, I don't have it enabled on here, but that takes you straight to your calendar, which is actually quite a nice thing if you have it linked to your mobile phone. Okay, so a little bit of testing when we come into a car park. So if we were gonna come and stop in this bay, we have come and stopped. So let's turn the car off. Where we parked, it knows we can't go forwards anymore. So as you can see here, it's saying tap to activate reverse. Normally when you get in the car and put your foot on the brake, it will say tap to activate drive. It knows we can't go forwards. So it wants to put me in reverse straight away. So we're pulling out of this. It now has an auto shift feature, which you can turn on. So when I start to reverse, it almost knows I'm trying to complete some kind of three point turn. So it should offer me, if I brake and turn at the same time, it then puts me in drive. So look, there you go. So it's offering now. So if I now start turning the wheel and touching the brake and turning, I've completed them, so it's put me in drive. So it's very, very handy in this kind of like car park environment. Also with this EV, it's very good because look, I can change directions as long as I'm going less than five miles an hour, I think. Look, four miles an hour, three, so let's go forward. A lot of EVs and other cars, you have to come to a complete stop before you can pull. I know on some of the old uh, Tesla Model 3s or with the gear changer, the stick, um, you actually had to do that as well. See, it still knows I'm in this environment, so it's still trying to help me every so often and offer me, it. look, see now it's offering me a three-point turn. So let's go back and we'll take it up on its offer. Oh, it's disappeared. So there you go, the system is not perfect. I'm not gonna delete that from the video, I'll keep that in. I was using it and it actually abandoned me. So I'll have to do it myself. Manually pushing to go forward, say, hey? what does the world come to? Next up, HVAC system, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So as we know, if you push on, you can come into this screen. You have your air system. So how do you split it? It's like one solid line at the moment. If you pinch and push away, as you can see, look, it splits it into two vents, nice. And if you pinch and push back together, it puts it back to one. There's not too much else in here that's a secret. The rest of it's all pretty obvious. However, if you're outside of this screen, you're driving around, you want to turn it off, you don't have to go into the system and push off. If you just click and hold, there you go. You might've heard the system go really quiet. The lights have gone off and turned off. And subsequently, if you wanna turn it back on, you can just push it and it lights back up and it's all back on. The next one linked to this is gesture controls. So, well, they're not such gesture ones like in BMWs, you can twist your hand and things like that. However, like sliders as such. So on the temperature, if all of a sudden you get in the car and you're really warm, click and slide and it goes all the way down and click and slide and it comes back all the way. Lovely jubbly, stick it back on 20. And also for volume on the passenger side, of course, as you feel the driver, you'll use the volume control on the steering wheel, scrolling up and down. However, for the passenger, if you click and you can slide again up and down 
which is a lot easier than sometimes with these touch screens and you're driving along bumpy roads and trying to push the button precisely. Okay, so the almighty Tesla app, right. These shortcut buttons, the rest of the app is pretty straightforward. However, I've always wondered, I've watched people's videos and they're saying that there's a button where you can open the driver's door when it's frozen and things like that from the app and I have no idea where it is. So here it is. If you click and hold any of these buttons, it brings up many, many other options. So you can see here, we've got the air conditioning, which happens to be on because we're in the car. Flash your headlights, let's give it a push. There we go, headlights have had a little flash. Open the front, do the horn, activate a light show. Brilliant fun. Low power mode, defrost the car, of course, fart. The start button. You might think, what are you actually starting? There's nothing to start. We'll go through that in a moment. We'll open the boot and there it is unlatch the door so we'll just see the word scroll again hopefully you can pick the cameras picking that up so i want to move this unlatched door up to this so if you click and hold it you can drag it and drop it over there you go so you've got it up here but what if i wanted the lock open my charger port sentry unlatch and the vent there's actually a way of getting five up here so it's quite tight for space so when you click and hold the vent button which i want try and do it slightly on the left hand side bring it up, but if I hover over, it highlights it, but I don't want to do that, I want a fifth. So if I bring it right to the edge, look at that. So it's actually found like a sneaky little fifth one. Drop it there, there you go, and you've now got five. So you can come off that one, and you've actually got five to use in the future. Merry Christmas. Okay, so we've moved outside the car now. I said I'd promise I'd talk about this button. So let's give it a push and see what happens to the door. So this is the unlatch door. I'm hoping the window's gonna move down at the same time. Otherwise it's gonna damage the window frame or the trim. There we go. Lovely jubbly. So you've pushed that. Does that open the door just enough? We heard the window come down and you're in. So that's designed for frozen um, conditions when otherwise the door handles, because of being really flush and they do get stuck, it will not work. So yeah, this button, let's try it one more time. There we go, easy as that. Okay, so I promised you I was gonna talk about this Start app. So in a nutshell, if someone wants to use your car and they don't have access to the car, so if they don't have a key, they've lost their phone, something like that, you can click this Start button, it says active, and then it, look, there you go, it'll give you a two minute countdown where it basically gives the car two minutes of authority to be driven without any kind of key. So pretty smart. Just be careful not to push it uh, if you don't want to because your car is effectively a sitting duck then. That will stay on. If I click it again, it says their remote start already active. Wait for that and try again. So there's no way of actually cancelling it, I don't think. Let's click and hold. No. So when that is on, it is on. So unless you really want it, don't push it. This time, instead of a hidden feature, a personal tip. So if we come into the settings, controls, mirrors. So in the winter, the wing mirrors, as you'll see on a lot of Teslas, will auto fold in. So when it's frozen through the night, they'll fold in, but then they'll freeze. So in the morning, when they automatically try and open, they won't open properly. So I highly recommend auto fold off. I actually keep it off all through the year now but in the winter definitely have that turned off all right next up is the energy app so range wise if you see up here in this top corner while we're parked i've got 58 percent left which equates to 172 miles however is that actually accurate so this green one is the energy app if it's not on this bottom bar it means you haven't used it yet or haven't used it recently so just push the buttons and there is the energy app Give that a push and let's see what comes up. So the car reckons we've got 172 miles left. However, actually, if I drive like I've been driving for the last 10 miles, 178, the last 100, 173, so very close, and the last 200, 165, probably due to whatever the hell this was, I'll just blame the wife for that. So whatever this range is, it's a guide. However, if you come into the energy app, this is what you should be using. These are far more accurate of what you're actually going to achieve, especially on long distances. Okay, so we've come to the back of the car. Uh, there's a way of limiting how high the boot goes up. Let's open her up. And if I needed to say stop it right there, I'll show you how to. So you need to just apply a little bit of force 
it is quite a bit of force to so how strong the struts are. Let's say I want it there. And then you've got the button to bring it down. Click and hold it. Let's listen for two beeps. There you go. So that's now locked in place. So if I close it, let it close back down and then open it up again. And let's fingers crossed, it should stop. There you go. So it stopped already. So nowhere near where it went to originally. To put it back up, you just have to push the boot back up, put a bit of force in. Those struts are strong. And there you go, that is all the way up to the top. Click and hold again for a couple of seconds. Done. And let's do a final test. Shut it down. Open it back up and hopefully I haven't broken my boot. And that is, uh, goes all the way back up to the top. There you go, bingo. Okay, so we find ourselves at the charger port. So I want to get this out. There's usually two ways, but I'm gonna be showing you a third sneaky way. Though you can either jump inside the car, which is a bit of a hassle, slide across to the screen, go to the charging screen and then click unlock charger. But we're not gonna do that. Or you can go on your phone and click unlock on there. However, there is a third way. We know what the engineers at Tesla are like and they're very quirky. So what is this close to? This door, it doesn't work on any other door. So if I click and hold, not click and hold, if I open this door, hold it for three seconds, there we go, shut that door and I can take it out and then the latch will go down. So someone has thought if you open that door handle for three seconds, but it works, as silly as it does, it works. Okay folks, so the charger is in, but there is actually a manual release for this as well. The only stipulation for this is if you use the manual release, which is in the boot, which I'll show you in a second, it must not be charging. Tesla says you could end up being electrocuted if it does, because this is basically still charging. You haven't told it to stop and you're manually releasing it. So make sure you click stop in the app or stop on the screen up there. Okay, so let me show you where it is first. I've put a little torch there. If you come up here, this handle is normally tucked away. There's a little cutout hole here and you can pull this handle out and you get something to pull. I'm pulling the manual release and I can remove this in one go. Happy days. Right then folks, and so now into the driving section. So we're gonna go out and do some autopilot stuff on the motorway, but I've just brought this up to read to you. Also, if you click in the, on the uh, pop-out box in the top corner, it'll take you to where I kind of put the car up against it, where it was gonna fail almost really with autopilot on smaller roads in the UK. This car doesn't have enhanced, it doesn't have full self-drive, but we're now gonna to go to the motorway and test out some autopilot. The thing is to activate it, you can either elect to have a single click, which activates beta auto steer, and when with one push of the button, and then if the button is pushed again, it all cancels. However, this car has auto steer, but it does also have the traffic aware cruise control, so for maintaining speed and then a distance from a car in front. So I think I've read that having it as a double click is much better because one click activates the traffic aware cruise control and then the second quick click operates the auto steer. But then also when it comes to changing lanes, because I'm gonna have to do that manually, by having it on a double click means that the cruise control will stay active even when the auto steer doesn't. And that's what I've read anyway. So we're gonna go and test that out. So we'll start off with the single click and then we'll progress on to the double click when we figured out how it works. Okay, folks, so we're coming onto the dual carriageway. I've got it in single click for everything and we're creeping up. We're nowhere near the speed limit. So let's single click it and see what it does. So I've take, come off the accelerator, come off the brakes, obviously, and it's set at 48. So if I was to, I think now if I accelerate, take over myself, and then if I push the speed, yeah, see, ah, so that automatically brought my speed up to there. If I scroll up quickly, yeah, there you go, it goes up in fives. And if I scroll down slowly, it goes down in one. So if I scroll down quickly, yeah, it goes up and down in fives again. So you can see here, so let's scroll up quick, five, scroll up quick, 70, there's your limit. Okay, so the single click has taken over. So now if I want to change lanes, let's try indicating. So it's indicating, ah, so there you go. So that has disengaged absolutely everything on that indication. So we'll go back over here, single click, 
re-engage, go back up to 70. So again, that was indicating. So the moment I indicated and then started to turn, yeah, the car literally just stopped immediately doing everything. There you go, and having to re-engage again. Okay, so you can see that single click, um, yeah, it, without the enhanced autopilot, with changing lanes and things like that, the moment you go anywhere near changing the lane, even with indicating, it just disengages absolutely everything, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Okay, so we're back out. Now I've got the double click engaged. So let's, if I do a single click now, what happens? That's just one click. Okay, so that, so I'm now in complete, still in complete control of the steering wheel, yet this is locked in, so my speed has locked in, yet I'm still in control, because you can see down here on the map, there's no blue line. So let's do, from a single click, let's do one more single click, and that's just turned everything off. Okay, so I'm back in control. Okay, so for now, let's go back and do one single click, even though we're on double. Okay, so you can hear the bong, and it's taken over the adaptive, the cruise control. So this is where on my right wheel, if I click to the right, you can see here the, how many cars behind I want to follow. And if I go left, it goes more. We'll keep that on two for now. So I've single clicked it. Now let's double click from here and see what happens. Okay, so now you've got your blue lines and the car has taken over absolutely everything. So now the big test, let's indicate and change lanes and see what happens. Ah, that's better. So let's just go back over to the left because there's a car coming. You can see that the auto steer has disengaged because I don't have enhanced, so it won't change lanes. However, it kept the speed going. So the adaptive speed, the cruise control was still active. So that is a much better system. So there you go, quite quickly, I can recommend that have this in double click on here. So auto steer is on and then have it as double click because even if you go over the lines, your speed will still be maintained. So you don't have to worry about the accelerator or anything like that. And if we were closer to the car in front, the adaptive cruise control would still actually be active. So then the car would slow down as well. Whereas when you have it in single click, as we saw, as soon as you go near anything, then everything cancels and you have to take complete control again. Right, I hope that was uh, interesting. I've actually learned something from that. Okay, here's a good demonstration. The car is doing everything at 70. It's on auto steer, you can tell with the lines. However, we are catching this car up in front. We're set at two car lengths. I'm not touching at anything at all. And there we go, we are. The car is slowing down, you can see. It wants me to apply a slight turning force. There you go, because I wasn't touching the steering wheel. However, you can see there at nighttime, especially, two car lengths. That's following a little bit close. So let's lengthen that to five car lengths. And hopefully that car in front will pull away a little bit. Yeah, you can see that it is. And then let's see where the Tesla thinks five car lengths is. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. See, that feels like a safer distance, especially traveling a little bit quicker at kind of 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. Okay, while uh, auto steer and the adaptive cruise control is doing its work and I am relaxing, there is one other question people ask a lot of with, okay, well, what happens with the Tesla when you hit 0%? I've currently got 149 miles, 51% left, so we're not running out of juice anytime soon. However, what happens if you hit 0%? Does it just run out immediately? The answer is no. Um, the, there's about a three kilowatt buffer built into the Tesla. So just like in any kind of ice car, when it goes to zero, I'll still have roughly between 10 and 20 miles left. There was a recent video on CarWow uh, and Matt Watson ended up in the new Model Y Juniper and I think it ended up doing in the 20s miles left after even the mileage hitting zero. So no, it, when you hit 0%, it doesn't just die. Hey guys, welcome to the end of the video. Uh, if you've made it this far, you are massively hinted and tipped up on how to use your Tesla to its fullest capability. Click up here if you want to watch another fun video. Click down here to my lovely face to subscribe to the channel, to view any other awesome content that's coming up. Genuine stuff, honest reviews, and just a bit of a laugh. Right, see you at the next one. Cheers, guys.